Today is Saturday, April 6th, 2019. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Survivor Edge of Extinction Week 7. That's right. This is when we turn the reins of the show over to the other super fans. Although Joanne and I do tend to comment and no. answer questions and uh, sometimes go on and on too long. But the primary motivation of this show is to let you add your voice <laughs> to the Survivor Fans podcast audience so you can share your analysis and your predictions. Maybe something from your particular walk of life struck you as different, and you can share that and enhance the viewing pleasure for all the rest of us or teach us a life lesson, whatever that may be. Anything we need to say before we get started? I do not believe we have any announcements this week. Okay, let's dive right in. First up, we got a call from Pete. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Pete from Boston calling here. Yeah, baby, the tide has turned. <laughs> what goes around comes around, Eagle Eric. Now sing with me, guys. Na 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 na. Off the edge of extinction to join Joe and Chris. The three strongest guys are all together. Oh, Eric, how do you tell your team that that you want to go to the family visit? That was horrible gameplay. And to boot, you don't even make the ones at the bottom comfortable. And I don't know what Rick Devins is thinking either. But wow, Eric and Ron really screwed it up for that team. And I have to give credit where it's due to war. Dog. I know some don't like War Dog, but he really and truly talking with Julia there, I think really set the tone. And then Julia talking with Gavin, and then they, they talk with Victoria. And I was worried with the edit, because it made us think that Victoria wasn't going to flip. She was like, I think Kelly's the better vote. And at Tribal, I still didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, I thought Aurora had flipped by that point, but I didn't think Victoria was going to flip. Provoke, and that's why I thought Julia and, and uh, Gavin were going to stay true. But nope, that they went with the lesser folks, with David and Wentworth and War Dog and Lauren. And to boot, Lauren and Wentworth again didn't have to play their idols. That is amazing. It really is. And I don't know what to say about Rick. He, if he was drunk or what the heck's going through his thick, goofy skull. Because to me, I loved him, but he has a horrible game now. What does he think? We're going with the karma folks. What do you think he's going to make it to the final five? But they'll get rid of him easily. I mean, he should have just stayed with Wentworth. But now forget it. He's a wild card in my book right now. We'll see with Devins. I'm worried for him. And a little bit with David, too. And i got to give credit for, for Aurora. You know, she was on the outs with her tribe. Because she was on, she was with Joe and Aubrey. And she pulled out a huge immunity win. Even though she tried to a negotiate she with Victoria there but nothing happened and she earned the win which I'm glad there was no deal and I'm glad Lauren was alright there was no medical evac same thing happened to Joe with second chance and he wasn't evacuated either so glad we had a great tribal blind side with Eric and the tide is turned now we'll see now who's this? what's going to happen to Ron and Julie because I don't think they didn't see it coming either we're in for a huge tribal next week it looks Looks like, guys, we'll see another awesome episode, and I'm loving this Extinction Island twist. Better than Ghost Island. Great stuff. Take care. Woo. Woo. 
Oh, a hundred percent better than yeah, that's Ghost easy Island. To do. That's <laughs> yeah. Well. yeah. Anything was better than Ghost Island. <laughs> yeah. That was a uh, that was a thundering disappointment. Mm, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm fine going with that. Better than Ghost. Okay. <laughs> Definitely give you that. If you want some more insight into what Rick was thinking, he goes into it in some depth in one of his extra videos. Mm-hmm. So he. You can understand it, or at least I could, when I heard his rationale. It's like, yeah. okay, I see, it made I see a lot what you're more doing. Sense. I would say from my own life experience, where, you're, where you don't get to call the shots, but you have big responsibilities and you got to mold and change opinions. Like I've been in positions where I'm looking at something that's going to cost tens of millions of dollars, something that I'm proposing, Right. And I have to get consensus across a a spectrum of folks. And I've had those people actively work to undermine me. And that's very, very frustrating. You know, you can't can't understand what their motivation is until then you see them propose something at a later point. And you go, oh, 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 I see. Okay. So you can't burn bridges, right? That's the the metaphor. Even though you you feel it in the moment... (laughs) You really think you're not really known for keeping that those feelings to yourself either. Oh, you, I see. You, have you don't had know to me learn. in the business world. Though. No, no, and you I, don't know what I've been able to accomplish true, necessarily and what I've had to deal with. So you're right. I don't know all the fine details, but you I, don't even know the gross details of a lot of these <laughs> things. So yeah. Well, but honey, those things are all simple when you think about having to change my mind about something mm-hmm. that should be a piece of cake for you to do that <laughs> right in any case <laughs> you know imagine dealing with an army of joannes yeah in a big corporate world yes uh-huh. yeah hey okay. there you go and that's that's the thing i guess you were talking when we were watching the extra videos you're talking mm-hmm. about how david was managing himself yeah and he's yeah. far more used totally. to it maybe rick's not had that experience being a, a news anchor being in front and and all that maybe he hadn't had to work from the bottom the way david had the way a lot of other folks like <laughs> like us have well the one thing too is i think rick was clear-headed in his in the extra video and he made a lot more sense to where and he explains his vision of where he sees himself going yeah beyond and that he does have a, a strategy path. and a and a plan a path yeah and he's determined but in the, in the, the on the show i think the fact that he'd probably been drinking at the um reward feast and that he was acting different number one and maybe not articulating as well as he usually would. Or <laughs> I, I think that probably did. And that's why David said, well, I think one of us is drunk. Yeah, so I think that might have had and something and it for colored it to, everything. He, he allowed for it to be himself, even though David knew he hadn't been imbibing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in any case, yeah, there's there's a good extra video there. There's There was quite a few that gave some extra perspective, although... Not so much on the Victoria change, but thankfully mm, we've got yeah. a super fan who's paid close attention to what Victoria's been tweeting. So we're going to hear some more details about what her process was mm, as we uh, go through the listener feedback show. You know, the thing, too, when we were watching the videos, War Dog, you know, we saw another side of him this week. And that he, that he yeah, actually... Code word mustard? He made... <laughs> Okay, well, that was not his <laughs> brightest moment, but um, but uh, he was. We were watching his extra clip, and I found myself. Oh, that's part of it. It's not what he's saying. What he's saying, I don't have a problem with, and I follow it, and it's logical. But something about his the delivery. way he talks, and I thought at some point, even though I. I'm okay with what he's saying. I just kind of, it's like monotone. And it just kind of starts to go, blah, 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 blah. It's just, I thought, oh, I would, I would tune him out face to face at some point. Right. I would have no idea what he was saying. I'm going to do that to you sometimes and even during the show. But we all know that sometimes I space out and mm-hmm. I'm in my own head or reading notes or, and I don't know what you said. Yep. So. But uh, I... That's different, though. 
I know. <laughs> but I thought that's part of, I think, what it is with me and, and War Dog is just his delivery yeah. almost puts me to sleep. Yeah. He's, and I don't sleep well. He's so. like a 10-watt bulb <laughs> most of the time, and every once in a while he kicks it up to 60, 75, 120, something like that. And it's like, okay. All right. Thanks, Pete. We enjoyed that. Next up, we got an email from Mary in Michigan. Hi, guys. What a great episode. Sure enjoyed it more than last week. Between the two challenges, I think Aurora was the star this week. So glad Aubrey sent that vote to her. Makes me think that the Joe Aubrey Aurora bond was a real deal and will remain important if Joe or Aubrey get back in and she's still there. Okay, to that point, excellent extra video with Aubrey explaining that in a lot more yep, detail. Absolutely. And you're spot on there. There that's the short well, short version. And the difference between watching Aubrey speak out on um, extinction and the and the clip with chris trying to talk mm -hmm. and he's just really having trouble talking focusing and uh and he talks a lot about i just want to you know like uh reem said take a nap i you know my brain says i should be looking for this advantage but my body's so weak i don't care there's a <laughs> We're doing a little bit of a squirrel here because that's kind of off, I know, off her it point. Is. But there is a visual progression you can observe. You see it in oh, green. Yeah. Now it's taking Chris down. Aubrey may be next if it's going to follow that. Although Aubrey... When they got voted out. Talks, yeah. ab talks about how this portion of the games where she gets supercharged so and okay let's get yeah, back okay at the very least if any of the three of them are in the final three they will have two jury votes on lock joe's got an extra video where he talks about that and how yep, he's thinking about absolutely it too. Very good. he's already I'm, working it i'm amazed that kelly and lauren still both have their idols i was tweeting play your idols but they clearly had more knowledge of how the vote was shaken out than us viewers were privy to props to david for not giving up that half an idol Bad on Rick for how he handled it. He should have at least told David he was still with him until he got that idol. That's true. <laughs> he tanked his own game in this episode. I think his only play now is to crawl back to Lesu with his tail between his legs. He might even have to hand over his half to David to make amends. We will see, but I think he may be heading back to the edge sooner than later. I was thrilled that Julia and Gavin got talked into turning on Kama but I would have definitely went for Ron in that scenario. Eric would have been alone without Ron and doesn't have the strategic chops that Ron does. I hope he goes next week. Now, let me be clear. I don't think that Julia, Gavin, and Victoria made the right move for their own games. I'm just happy as a viewer to see that happen and without needing to burn any idols or Aurora's extra vote advantage. Speaking of advantages, why haven't we seen David's fake advantage plans or Ron's advantage menu fake out come into play? I have to believe Ron is going to try it since they showed us him planning it. Could David be thinking he'll plant the half idol after Rick's gone? Back to my current fave, Aurora. First, let's acknowledge her great performance in the reward challenge. A extra video where she goes into that too. Mm -hmm. You're hitting all the extra video highlights. Mad respect as she performed better than the men. And you could say that about the women, just in general, yeah. for this season. <laughs> with, for with the exception, individual immunity, yeah. With the exception of Joe. Second, let's talk immunity challenge. How, how dare Julie talk crap to her for trying to make a deal with Victoria to drop? I think she saw or at least heard Lauren go down, and she may have felt close to going down herself. Probably thought, I got to do this now or I might fall. Not to mention Jeff hadn't stopped the challenge, so why would she quit competing? And basically, who does Julie think she is? I find it hard to believe that Julie wouldn't have been doing the same thing if she was still up there. Well, and, and if she was in that position. Julie thinks she's comfortable. Her extra mm -hmm. videos go into that. Well, she probably didn't now. Great depth, she yeah. Did then. So take your seat and pipe down, but that's just my opinion. I think Ron, Julie, and Rick are in trouble. I think you're right. I say that with a smile on my face. I think this next episode is a big one that may really lay the groundwork for the end game. My ultimate hope is a final three of Joe, Aurora, and Kelly or David. I want to think Aurora has a shot, but since we haven't seen her until this week, if I read the edit, this is probably not likely. Yeah, don't don't think you know the edit. They're yeah, they're yeah. playing games. They're shaking with you up this the time. edit this, Kelly, this season. 
Kelly, Lauren, and Aurora could be fun, too. I could get behind an all-female final three, assuming Joe is not an option. As for Julia, Victoria, and Gavin, I don't think they ultimately will end up in the finals. I think we've got us a Lesu story now. I don't think they'll go out next, but I don't think they'll make it to the very end. Overall, this was my favorite episode of the season so far, and I think that the game just took a turn that makes it very exciting. Finally, can I say, Reem, just raise the mast already so you can go and take your nap. Thanks again for all you guys do. Really enjoyed the recap this week. Talk to you next week. All right. Thank you, Mary. Very good, Mary. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of important points. Yeah. Hit the Sorry highlights. we interrupted you so much. <laughs> next. Um, you said something that I have to comment on. Okay. You said, you know, the women were ruling it except for uh, Joe, of course, and I thought, uh, excuse me, Julie beat Joe. That's why he's where he is. In that one case. Well, I'm talking There's about no individual, one out there who, individual immunity. Who carried their tribe to the winds oh, the way not. Joe did in in such a... They don't measure up. And but I thought we were talking individual immunities. No, since they started I'm looking out. at what he okay. offers in the context well, of challenges sense. in the game. When you can throw your whole tribe on your back and win... Oh yeah. Then that's in it. That puts you in a different league. That's why he's Joey Amazing. Just, just, just like he wasn't. He wasn't Joey Amazing in the um, other challenge where he passed out, just like Lauren did. So we can we can yep. go on and on about how tough Lauren is and all that and <clears throat> what a beast she is. But if you don't win, you don't you don't win. So you got to win to earn that. Well, I have to say she gave her all, and she's willing to Fair. push her body that far. Yep. Yeah, and there's an extra video where she talks about that experience, too. And that she naturally runs on her toes. <laughs> yeah, she I said, I knew I could do this because... A toe walker. Yeah, she's a toe walker anyway and yeah. runner. And people make fun of her for that, she said. So she knew she had an advantage. <laughs> she she thought she did until her blood well, pressure right, let her down. Yeah, Literally. Yeah. Dropped her down. Sometimes you get listener feedback that's not like after the episode's done. It's like while it's in progress, there's a commercial. I'm so freaking exciting. I got a call. Let's check in with one of those. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so War Dog, he couldn't win a challenge if he was the only one in it. But his little mastermind just flipped the game upside down. I'll call back when I can think. In case I didn't say in my last phone call, this is Shay. I may have forgotten. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, she didn't call back with anything more. Well, they, but I enjoyed that excitement and energy so much, I decided to go ahead and include and it. Include it. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Shay. <laughs> we didn't want just us to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next up, we got an email from Boston Mark. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. You haven't heard from me this season, but I'm loving your show as usual and loving the season. All right. Despite what I say in this email, you know I'm a big fan of yours. I have some random things. In a competitive way, I love the fact that you, my USB 24 Lauren outlasted Stacy's USB Eric in the game. <laughs> I know Eric was also Joanne's, but she hasn't been ragging on Lauren all season long like Stacy has. You have called her fat four times, said she will probably have a medical quit maybe three times, and scoff at almost every compliment Joanne has given her. <laughs> I say go Lauren. Beat Stacy. Um I mean beat Eric. <laughs> I love it. On the other hand, Stacy, thank you for explaining Wendy to me. When you said it was an anime thing, I realized she is a character. Although you are all sick of her and didn't mention her speech when Audrey and the others thought they were leaving the game, I was fascinated by it. She was speaking with her whole body. I have never seen that. I know. Who cares? <laughs> well, that's cool that you enjoyed it and liked yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks well, I did that. too, and I noticed and observed all those things. But she didn't really say anything about her time on. She basically said, "Well, I I wasn't really there, but I mean, it, and then yeah, I'm here." So she didn't really say anything to comment about exactly. Anyway, moving along. Speaking of who cares, three musical notes. A, I love your new intro. But not the outro as much. Ha! 
That's what I said. But you'll be happy. He has a new outro. Well, I have a new one that I was using as of Wednesday, so now I don't know which one he's referring to. Uh, mm, okay, well, I don't either, but we'll see. <laughs> I didn't I didn't catch that. Okay, B, you retired the old Survivor intro the same year that, how, how, pronounced, let's see, Haloti Nada, Okay. Retired from the NFL. His name was in the old theme, and every time you played it, I thought of him. And C, I hate the new music for the voting sequence this year in the show. Just doesn't seem to fit. Hmm. All right. Pay more attention There's to our that. music analysis. <laughs> I have been following a lot of the cast's Twitter this year, and it has added to my enjoyment of the show. Julie's kids are stars. War Dog keeps bragging despite he is a guy with a Yankees tattoo who can't throw. <laughs> Says Austin Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria is snarky and points out she is sunburnt on her scalp and two challenges in a row she has had to balance things <laughs> on her head. Kelly can poke fun at herself and I like the banter that happens. Rick has fascinated me this season. He is certainly quick-witted, but Jeff called him out this episode that he might have dropped out of the challenge just for the joke. Oh, that was David that said that. That wasn't probes. Oh, okay. But even if you are as naturally angry as he was this episode, you just cannot show it like he did. Even if you think you're angry at all those in an inferior position, it will backfire. The next time on Survivor has me psyched for next week. Actually, I'm excited for the whole season. Go, Lauren. Boo, Stacy. <laughs> All right. I didn't say she was fat. I said she went out with extra fat on her, which was smart. You missed the compliment. I know, part of that. but it did sound like that because I kept saying, She's not at all. What are you talking about? She, well, she doesn't good company, have Boston any Mark. weight on her. Not now. She's well, she island fit now. She didn't really have much then either. But the point is, is that you I, got when I you switch you. over in ketosis and you're burning that fat for fuel when everyone else, you know, who goes out there vain and super, you know, with low percent body fat. Like so Chris it says, was a compliment. He, Chris said he wished he'd come out there as a fat man. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he, so he, could he did say that in his extra stores. video yeah, he this did. week. Yeah, that's he exactly He said, man, that. I wish I had, I had done that. Tactical error. So uh, I, I don't. Anyway, great to have you back, Boston yes, Mark. Good enjoyed job. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's check in with Slappy, see where he is, what he's thinking. I bet it's got something to do with the side challenge. Hey, Joanna Stacy, this is Slappy McGee. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm calling you from Bowen, Massachusetts. I was wanting to talk to you a little bit about the survivor. Notice I said the survivor. Love saying that. Love listening to you guys. Love watching the show. Although, this whole survivor. Fantasy League has got me in a tizzy. I don't know how I keep getting farther behind. I, I think I got all four of my safety picks right. I even changed it because I had Eric at one point, but I think I changed that. I haven't gone back and looked, but it doesn't seem like I'm gaining any ground. So I know I didn't get my vote off right because I voted for David to get voted off at the last second. I thought maybe he would be the one that could conk on the head. And uh, anyway, it didn't matter. I was wrong. Ah, that's the story of my Survivor Fantasy life. So I don't know who I'm rooting for anymore. Still rooting for Rick. But Mr. Devins there got a little emotional. Showed some of his, his darker side, his anger side, which is maybe good. Maybe he's proven that he can't be pushed around a little more, but got himself on the wrong side of the vote. So I don't know if that's good. I think that's not so good. So I'm a little worried about my USB. But I'm still sticking with him. We're riding or dying with the Devins. Kind of rooting for Lauren a little bit. I think she's overcoming a lot. If she took the tumble. The competitor in her was the only thing that was hurt. <laughs> and she was just embarrassed by the, the blocking out. But what a tough lady. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome to see. She's got the community idol still play, and I can't believe they didn't play it. Her and Kelly, what a good move that was. And her legs, man, are so long. Have you noticed that? I noticed it on this challenge. They were sitting there, and her legs are longer than David is tall. It was crazy. But she's like a beast. When she's standing beside them, it's like she's a statue. She's like Wonder Woman. That's what she is. She's kind of like if Wonder Woman was on Survivor, that would be Lauren. So I'm kind of cheering for Lauren because I liked Wonder Woman, the movie with uh, Gal Gadot. And uh, so I think that she 
Lauren could be the next Wonder Woman because she's she's pretty impressive. If she could only get something to eat in her body and her system, she would be undefeatable. I think undefeatable. Maybe that's the word. She's the one that I think that has the biggest shot out of it outside of uh, Devin. Come on, Devin. Although you know those younger Kama members like Gavin and, and Julia and now Aurora banding together, they have a shot too. And Gavin's kind of going under the radar. Victoria, uh, she's pretty pretty sneaky too. She's already admitted to being sneaky. So got to watch out for that little small group. I'm glad that Ron got his comeuppance because I'm kind of sick of his game. So, and I think they took out the right one between him and Eric because I think Eric is a more challenge beast. So, good on them for pulling that blind side. That's it for me. I just kind of thought I'd throw in my two cents and I'm going to keep struggling with this fantasy thing. I keep getting points, but it's like everybody else is getting points too, so I feel like I'm really not even getting traction. But we're going to hope that Rick Devin wins it all and, and puts me over the top. That's the, <laughs> that's the goal. All right, guys. Thanks for the wonderful podcast. Look forward to the feedback. Go Wonder Woman. And go uh, banjo recitals. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I can't find any, Stacey. I'm going to look for some around here. I can't find any in this, these areas I keep bouncing around to, but we'll we'll, we'll get there. Cause I'm watching that video that you posted over and over again. It's really good. Uh, you know, never know. I might go out buy it. By a starter ban- banjo. Starter banjo? Is that a thing? A starter banjo? Might have a little starter one. Maybe it has a little plastic cord on it. All right. Take care. Love you. <laughs> hey, Slappy, if you don't mind, you should send us your address so I could send you an invitation to the next recital. <laughs> oh, I, there's not one on the horizon. So there's <laughs> we'll definitely one. such a thing as, <laughs> as starter banjos. <laughs> so yeah, you're in luck there. Or you know what might even suit you better? I think what you would banjolele. Yeah, that would tickle him, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a banjo combined with a ukulele. Mm, very portable for someone who's always on the move. Stacy has one of those too. All right, thanks, Slappy. Enjoyed that. Next up, we got an email from Jesse in Canada. Hello. This episode began with the War Dog Wentworth and Lauren discussing. Let's talk about the reward challenge and why was David on the puzzle again? He's already proven how bad he is at puzzles, and yet for some reason is always in the puzzle solver role. I'm just curious. Do the contestants choose what part of the challenge they'll be in, or is it random? I I think they work it they, out between themselves. They strategize, yeah, yeah, among themselves. Of course, David loses, which doesn't bother his puzzle partner, Ron, because Ron hates anything that doesn't have a yellow. I'm, I'm putting that in. Yellow. Yellow. Yeah, that's how he says Yalla. Yalla buff. I'm really tired of the comma strong dynamic. There's only one tribe now, and comma, Manu, and Lesu are all extinct. I find it boring when one tribe just steamrolls the other the entire season, and I was afraid that was what this season was going to be. I only like Extinction Island for the drama, and this week it was lacking. Why not just have a short clip of Extinction that would be like, Losers get a clue. Loser Aubrey finds advantage. Then cut right back to the tribe. I'm with you. (laughs) I'll go with your version. What was up with Rick this week? He is emotional, angry, and especially bitter towards his former Lesu members. David tries to get him to see the big picture, but Rick just isn't having it. At the immunity challenge, Lauren faints. I hate to see people get hurt unless their name is Dancing Ron. (laughs) That's harsh. Is you okay for him getting hurt, huh? Aurora's played a victory... Victoria. Victoria. That makes more sense. About throwing the challenge with something else. Who cares about this Lesu member? Kama excluded me from the vote. (laughs) That was her pitch. Is what I heard from her speech about being left out. Aurora ends up winning, so her shady tactics pretty much go unpunished for now. Shout out to War Dog. I don't really like the guy because his voice reminds me of a caveman. But he is far from cave drawings. He's one of the best manipulators this season. And I'm thinking about the flashback scene with War Dog, Gavin, Julia, discussing Ron and Eric. I thought they were just going to laugh it off, like how he did with, like how they did with Aubrey's open a dialogue speeches. For some reason, they listen to him, and honestly, he makes good points. And I, th- I think we discovered why they listened and when we were watching the extra videos, right? Because Julia. Julia was talking about what that reward meant to them, and she was talking about getting to interact with everyone, and that was that, I think that's when that door opened for him, and he was able to make that connection with Julia. And because Julia is open, and obviously Gavin, too, to, uh, you know, bringing in other people for when it's time to make a move. Yeah. It was interesting to contrast use them. how Julia perceived that reward meal and what it meant and how she took advantage of it versus how Victoria looked at it. Oh, yeah. It was totally yeah. different. Yeah. Complete 
but they were like, like polar opposites. Julia's version. Yeah. Well, you can see how what happened between Julia and then I think Julia was the door to Gavin mm -hmm. for Wardog from that. So you could see how that came together. Now, do you think they would have entertained this thought if, say, a former player like Wentworth brought this up? Or do you think they were more open to Wardog's views because he is a new player like them? Oh, that's, that's a good point, too. So, yeah, he's got that. They, they might have been more biased towards Wentworth making the pitch. Or, you're right. But I think it had something to do, like we were saying, with the reward meal and the connection he was able to make with Julia there. Yeah, and I think you, if you're playing a good social game, you should listen. Always, no matter what, no Absolutely. matter what position you're in, just like how you can see, you saw Ron mishandle Julia when she tested him, and you, you got to think you're always being Ron? tested. I'm sorry, not Ron, Eric. Eric. Yeah, yeah. I think I looked up at the visual roster and saw yeah, Ron, and that's what popped out <laughs> as I was scanning, looking for Eric. Well, Tribal Council came around, and after all the talk about Kama Strong, barf, and went down, it ended up being Eric going to the Edge of Extinction. Edge of Extinction is pretty boring, and unless Reem is telling someone off, I really don't need to see it. Just show me the players still in the game. Least favorite part of the episode? How Kama all grouped up and screamed Kama Strong on the beach, even though they aren't Kama anymore. Favorite part of the episode, the look on Ron and Rick's face when they knew they were bamboozled by former members of Kama. Preview for next week, it's chaos. Alliances are fractured and names are being thrown around like there's no tomorrow. I can't wait. Thank you so much and can't wait to hear from the other listeners. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, it's exciting when you see the, uh, the preview video they released yesterday on Friday and you can hear like some overlapping dialogue that's coming out of Tribal Council you can tell that it's devolved, <laughs> that it's just nuts in there, and that's what the jury's reacting to. Hmm, okay. Next up, we got a call from Rajmi. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all my survivor friends. Now, this last episode, I really enjoyed. It was loads of fun. Some of the highlights for me was, number one, was Aubrey deciphering the clue and getting her advantage and the extra vote she sent to Aurora. That was loads of fun, and I'm so glad she won it. I was really cheering her on. The second highlight for me was when David Point Bank said to Rick, no, I will not return your second half. I would like to keep it for some more time. The look of on Ron's face at tribal council where he realized he was not the puppet master, but he had been played royally. Aurora's win was really good, and I was happy for her because she was really at the bottom, and it's always great to see somebody at the bottom get back there, even though the situation at that time was grim with Lauren, but I'm glad she's better. War Dog has shown some strategy. That was a good one. Now, this I found really funny was when Kelly was sitting there giving her confessional and swatting the flies who were bothering her. It just reminded me of another show that I love is American Gods and there's a character in it called Dead Wife who always has flies flying around us. So whoever watches American Gods will get it. Yep, so that's it. And I think Rick is in grave danger now. Yeah, and it was so amazing. I was just thinking Kelly is going to play her idol. She's going to play her idol, but she didn't because they were all in the know. It was absolutely great fun. Looking forward to the next episode and I'll figure out who will go out next because I wasn't right last time. <laughs> anyway, cheers. All right. Thanks, Rajmi. Rajmi made me, made me remember when we were watching the episode again and we were curious what the key was for. What was the key for? Oh, remember yeah. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the practice area is actually got a lock. So she's able to unlock it, like to get the belt off and actually run through and practice. And then she can lock it back up because she controls the key. So it's, up, it's to her. up to her whether she shares it. Share, yeah. So people can see it, but they can't necessarily practice because she gets to lock it all up. She knew and understood to do that. I'm curious. They never said if Chris allowed anybody else to practice, but I don't think he did. Didn't seem like it, but it didn't seem like it mattered for him either. Mm -mm. He might have been slowing down then, and we didn't know it. Thanks, Rajmi. Next up, we've got an email from Yeltra in Ingersoll, Ontario, Canada. 
I'm a longtime listener, first time contributor. I just want to say, War Dog is an enigma to me. <laughs> On one hand, he seems like an overbearing jerk that should be going at the next tribal council, but then he comes out with the most logical observations and talks to people with points of view that totally make the most sense. He's done it time and time again. Could he actually be a winner contender? I don't know. If you Maybe. Watch the, if you <laughs> watch the extra video with him, it was called The Secret Scene, where he and Wentworth are talking and Lauren comes up um, on him. Yeah. He does not look like a mastermind at all in that scenario. <laughs> yeah. So he's got his moments for sure. I'm still liking Victoria and Devons in spite of his reluctance to work with the old Lesu tribe, which I totally understand. Twice burned. Someone last week said that Ron looked like some raspberry guy or something like that, but I have visual proof, which I'm sure works <laughs> well on a podcast, that he indeed looks like Jeff Dunham's puppet Walter. He does. He yeah. does. That, that was, was an awesome comparison. That was a great example comparison. you sent. Yeah. Thank you both for all the work you put in to create this podcast. It is much appreciated. All right. Thank you. Yep. Good um, job. Uh, that that was amazing. I, that picture, yeah, that and the picture, similarity, yeah. It was so close. Yeah. And the expressions, the lines around the eyes, the mouth, everything. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So thanks for that. That was that was awesome. Yep. Next up, we got a call from Cameron. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. Hey, Survivor fans. This is Cameron from North Carolina. Once again, no previously on Survivor. Thankfully, we have the podcast, so we don't need the recap every week. Joe said it gets harder each time. Unfortunately, with his reputation, I'm starting to feel like that the blind side was inevitable against him. Ron was the quote-unquote puppet master this week. How many times do we hear people call themselves this, and how many times has that person actually won the game? The only one I can think of is Boston and Rob, who basically had the check written to him before Redemption Island even started. I was talking to Kim last week, and she told me she sees Ron as more of a politician than a teacher, and honestly, I can see that, and I kind of agree with her. I do really wish Rick would at least stick with David now, though. It's kind of hard for me to determine which way would have been the right way, though I will say if they stick with Lesu, they could just let Wardog, Lauren, and Wentworth go to the end together, and after what happened with that vote, if it were them three at the end, I'd almost predict Wardog to be the winner. Props to all the feedback feedback submitters of this podcast for predicting that Lauren would be the one who passed out. But also, what's going on with Aurora? We haven't seen much of her so far, but her colors really showed when she had an extreme lack of sympathy for Lauren, when she was quite literally unconscious. Shame on her. I've had a feeling since the Jabbik I wouldn't be a huge fan of hers. Side note, but the secret video this week was really interesting. Wardog was kind of making it out to Kelly that he'd rather be with her than both her and Lauren in the finale. And I didn't see that coming. I mean, we haven't seen that in the episodes at all. I really liked David's oh, blank resume analogy at Tribal Council. He was really expanding on what Allison failed to last season. But man, I am mad that Eric got voted out. My USB could have changed it this week, but I chose not to. Oh, well. He really reminds me of John Hennigan just last season and that we could only assume yep. he would be a dominant player, but how can we know since both Eric and John were taking out early merge? I really wish Ron went instead for the sake of JSFL, of course, but also the actual game. But it's occurring to me that Victoria wasn't willing to take him out, but she was okay with taking Eric out. You can tell Gavin's a game player because last episode, I would never have seen him taking out Eric, but look what just happened. And while we love to hate War Dog, hats off to the guy. I mean, he was able to plant that seed in Gavin and Julia, which ultimately led to Lesu staying safe this tribal, and maybe for a few more. Rick really should have listened to David because once Lesu reclaims superiority, it slides out for Rick yet again. Next time on Survivor, you hate to see it, but it looks like Rick and David David are together no more. So yeah, I'm sad to witness Eric leave, but you know what? It's starting to get pretty good. Kim told me that the reason last season was so good was because everyone there was playing. And honestly, this season is shaping up quite well too. Once John got taken out of Kalo Kalo last season, I knew that it was game on. And I have to say that equating Eric to John in my mind is leading me to believe we're in for a fun ride this time as well. Let's just hope the Edge of Extension twist doesn't make crap hit the fan at the finale. All right, Joanna Stacy. All right, Survivor fans. Thanks for all of the amazing feedback. And I look forward to hearing some more next time ah thank you cameron i think that analogy of eric to john is perfect that's just spot on yeah and i i really also appreciate that everybody that's left in the game even on edge of extinction is there to play the game mm -hmm. 
Well, certainly every edge, single one. Edge of Extinction is a test of that. Yeah. And it's it's no joke. So yeah. they're all feeling the effects of it. Oh yeah. They uh, uh, Chris had said he had gone up to get the rice, but that it didn't. They didn't get enough rice. It didn't even replenish him for the energy he expended going to get it. Yeah. That was his assessment. Yeah. But yeah. I think the thing that's got him unnerved is that he's no longer motivated to look for the advantage. He's so mm-hmm. tired. He's got such yeah. a fog on his brain that he's not able to, he's just got no desire. It's not enough to overcome <laughs> where he's at. Well, I understand that, you know, when my blood sugar drops out or something, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I, mentally I'm like, blah, 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 blah. if I had an opportunity <laughs> to talk to him when he was saying that, I would have said, now this, remember this, because this is what it's like when you get older and you're not able to get enough sleep. <laughs> you're just getting a preview of what you're in for. All right. Thanks, Cameron. Good job. Next up, we got an email from Caleb in Texas. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, I'm new to your podcast and I'm excited to get this out. All right. Glad to have you here, Caleb. So let's cut to the chase. First of all, what an episode. The reward challenge was a great challenge. War Dog finally has his head in the game, sort of. That's giving him a lot of grace, given the fact that he basically chased off Rick from voting with him. Yeah, that's a good way to describe that. It was Lauren, after all, who passed out on the immunity challenge, but at least she wasn't evacuated, so that's good news. I'm glad that Aubrey got the advantage because she may need it against Chris and Joe and others to come. The editing was obvious that she was going to get it, too. All right, now for the big part. Eric vote. Heck yeah. That made me so happy. Biggest blindside of the season, hands down. Better than Aubrey's vote out, too. Just saying. Okay, I seriously have no idea who will win. Maybe Victoria. Wentworth seems to know what she's doing now, too, so that's cool. Next week, Ron is going to get bamboozled at an allergen toy crazy tribal council. All right. Cannot wait for that. Anywho, I'll be sure to write back next week as well. Thanks, guys, for a great podcast. Thank you. Good job, Caleb. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, it's Parker from Indiana. I missed a large portion of the episode. From what I did see, it was a pretty good episode. I completely understand why Rick is not wanting to work with the Lasso people at all. I don't understand what the Lasso people were thinking. They were being complete idiots trying to vote off Rick. That I still that still boggles my mind why that is the move they go with. Rick, honestly, he, he's one of my favorites this season. So, so like, I'm going to side with him. Wentworth is also one of my favorites of, like, all time. But this season, her gameplay is not been great so she's like lowered a little bit in my rankings which pains me to say because i was really looking forward to wentworth returning to the game that challenge where they hold the thing on their head and stand on their tippy toes that was entertaining and yeah it's pretty much just you're just waiting for the for the medivac which there was no medivac so thank goodness i think we all kind of figured it would be lauren Aurora is still trying to strategize while Dr. Joe's looking at Lauren. <laughs> that made me laugh. I was kind of mad that uh, Aurora won. Aurora won. Um, I don't know why her name is so hard for me to say. <laughs> Man, I had Ron going home. I really thought that um, he would get voted off. I, I was like, oh my gosh, it's close. It's going to be Ron. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to get all my points right i just got four right so that's pretty good but uh man i did not see eric coming at all and i'm hoping ron's next that was that was crazy i feel like why send somebody who's really strong in challenges to exile i i wouldn't think those two would make sense i was super shocked by eric getting voted off a good good move though for gavin and julia good good move I know that David and Rick had a little falling out, so I'm hoping it's something they can recover from because I love that alliance. Those two are great. And next time on Survivor, this, this classic, everybody's throwing out every name, everyone's a target, and then a, a crazy tribal council. You know, that's that's pretty much what happens at this point in the game. Apparently, Jeff said in an interview that this was uh, one of the craziest tribal councils ever the the one coming up next week we'll we'll see if it actually is or not i mean is it better than the no votes tribal council from second chances the the, the advantage Ganon from game changers the one where malcolm gets voted out from game changers the three amigos we'll we'll see <laughs> there's been a lot of great 
travel councils. <laughs> we'll see if this one can top it. All right, I think that's all I got. I will see you guys next time. All right, good job, Parker. Yeah, you can hear him say it even at the end of the preview they released yesterday that he's, you know, of course, he's always in a marketing mode. He's got his marketing hat on. He's an executive producer, but he's saying that it's one of the craziest travel councils that he's ever seen. So, good deal, Parker. Next up, we got an email from Barbara in Long Island, New York. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. I was glad to see Kama shaking up a bit. I was tired of the Kama strong chant, especially since Joe was the only reason they were strong. Mm-hmm. Kama's like a the rich guy who was born on third base and thought he hit a triple. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> in, oh, in choir, one of the things that, that that the analogies I thought of is when you're singing along with someone who knows the song, or even when you sing along with someone on on the radio, right? And you think, oh, I'm killing it. I'm just doing so great. <laughs> and then, like in choir, they ask you to sing it by yourself. And you're like, I don't know this song at all. And that's what I, that's what I think of when I see Julie, right? And when she was taking credit for all the wins and about how good mm. they've done. Every time I hear her say that. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Okay, let's go back to Barbara. Oh, poor Joe, with that tear in his eye. Imagine all the middle school teenagers weeping when they saw that, wishing they could make him feel better, real better. All right, Barbara. The war dog had a good episode, and Rick Devins had a stinker. But things change real fast in Survivor. What a great episode, this se- or what a great season. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Barbara. It's about to really scramble, I think, with the next oh, one. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, Hopefully, it'll just continue. It's going to be a hot to mess. Heat up every week. Yeah. Next up, we got a call from Nicola and Jackson. Hello, all our fellow Survivor fans. We're back. This is Nicola and Jackson. And we've missed a couple of weeks. It's been a busy time. Jackson had spring break. I was away for the weekend. And he doesn't usually get to watch Survivor till the weekend. So he missed a couple episodes. But we watched this week while you were on spring break, didn't we? Yeah. However, that was a couple of days ago. So I don't know how much we're going to remember here. What did you remember about the episode? <laughs> they had a thing that you had to balance on your head. They did. And somebody fell off. Who fell off? Do you remember who that was? No. No, it was Lauren. She passed out. So we thought well, that she was. She actually didn't. She did. Well, she woke up again, but she was. She looked like she was out there for a good little bit. I was pretty worried about her for a minute or so. But anyway, we just dropped in to say we're still enjoying the season. We're listening Yay. to everybody's feedback. Yay. And Jackson did some climbing at the zoo the other day, and he's it... getting ready for a survivor appearance when he turns 18. And there was baby penguin. There were baby penguins. <laughs> They're so cute. There were only two. There were only two baby penguins. And one was out of the water. One was spinning in circles. He was. He was. But we had a good time. So everybody take care. Have a wonderful weekend. And we will talk to you next week, hopefully when we remember more of the episode. Bye. Thanks for everything you do. Join us, Stacey. Bye. <laughs> All right, thanks, Nicola and Jackson. She's got him in training, already getting ready for, right. for, for when he'll be on. Good deal. Next up, we got an email from Julie in Iowa. Hello to all my Survivor friends. I want to remind you that I'm playing the home version of JSFL, and after the week six episode, my score was 20. <laughs> What's the top score? It's like 33? Yeah, but that was at uh, week seven. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. I I still had not gotten a single vote off point, and most of the time I was also losing a safe pick. My strategy just wasn't working, so I decided to change the way I was choosing a vote off and my safe picks. This week, I chose someone I really wanted to stay, as my vote off and my safe picks were the people I really didn't care that much about. I'm so excited to tell you that I got all five points this week. All right, (laughs) congrats on your new strategy. Did I say that Eric is my USB? I don't even care. I was so excited when he got voted out that I did a woo thanks Pete, and scared my dog. I was also so excited that I couldn't sleep last night and then overslept one and a half hours this morning, almost making me late for work. Wrigley, my 12-year-old Bichon, did not mind oversleeping one little bit. Did I say I was excited to finally get a vote off point? I should also tell you that I'm writing this in Shay's voice. I love Shay's feedback. 
So if you could read it like that, it would be great. Oh, How am I going to read shape? Let's see. How's that go again? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so War Dog, he couldn't win. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. My God. Oh, oh, my God. God. No, you're doing Valley Girl. I know. I don't know if we can do shape. I don't do imitations. I, I forgot to tell you that I'm thinking about cheering for Joe just because I want his hair. I have never had good hair like that. Those... M- those mean looks at Tribal last night made him look like a pirate. And I don't mind that he cried. He was probably crying because Reem didn't get on that boat with Wendy. I know I would be crying if I was stuck on an island with her. Me too. Oh, yeah. And the look on Ron's face when the votes were read? Priceless. This was the best episode in a long time, and my USB was voted out. I'm so excited. All right. Thanks, Julie. Thanks for writing in and sharing that. Well, I, that you know, great. I felt the same way that, yeah, I, yeah, I just lost my USB, but that was an awesome episode. Yes. As a fan, I think you you just get caught up in it. It's yeah. such a great survivor move. You bet. Next up, we got a call from Jeremiah. Hello, Joanna and Stacey. Hello, Survivor fans. This is Jeremiah Panhorst here with some feedback for this week's episode. I thought this was another solid episode this week for sure. I uh, That's a lot, saying a lot for me for a season I'm not necessarily in love with. And uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one, of course, I wasn't excited about the twist anyway. Anytime they take away from the initial part of what Survivor is all about, I'm not going to like it. Uh, the returning players, you know, are just okay for me. Uh, I like them, but, uh, you know, they're just all right. But the big thing that's kind of a big disappointment is I can't seem to really fall in love with any of the newbies. I mean, I like Rick. I like certain people. Victoria's not bad, I guess. I just don't really have anybody that I love this season, if that makes sense. But I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm trying to say. I still enjoy watching Survivor. I'm, I'm enjoying this season Even though I'm not big on the theme and stuff, I think it's been pretty good. And, you know, hey, as far as I'm concerned, any Survivor is better than no Survivor. Now, as far as gameplay this week, I have to say, I really feel like, I feel like Gavin and Julia really screwed up here. I think long term, this is not going to work out well for them. I think they should have waited at least a vote or two. Uh, but we'll see what happens with them. Does that mean they're fully now going to be with the Lesu tribe as plus David? I, I'm just trying to figure out the, how this is going to play out for them. It could go really poorly. They could be the next ones to go. I mean, if it's not, you know, if they're not going to stick all together and then go after Ron and the rest of them. But, oof, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if this is a good idea yet. But I do think Drew from Utah should consider putting War Dog as the player of the week. I can't believe I'm saying that. I know he uh, didn't do everything perfectly in this episode, as you guys pointed out, but it really was his doing to help convince uh, Julie, uh, Julia and Gavin to switch over. So I feel like he deserves a lot of credit for this. Do you guys yeah. agree with that? And then lastly, on this gameplay, do you guys think is Rick Devins in trouble now? I feel like maybe he is. Not sure who's going to go home next week, but right now I'm leaning towards probably either Ron or maybe maybe Gavin or Julia. I'm just trying to figure out which direction this is going to go. So I have a little time to think about that. And lastly, I want to mention, of course, JSFL. I did switch my USB away from Aubrey because I didn't feel good about her winning, obviously. So I decided to go with Rick Devins, who now I think <laughs> is, might be in trouble. <laughs> In fact, actually, he could be the other one who gets voted out this uh, coming up week. Hmm. Well, a lot to think about, and my time is up. So you guys take care, and until next time, this is Jeremiah from Southern California. Yeah, so I stayed with Eric, but I was thinking about Rick, thinking about Victoria, Mm. and they're all in a mess now. Yeah, definitely Rick's. He's he's made choices, and he's closed doors when he should have just kept them open. But again, voting blocks next week is a new week. And so, good luck figuring that out too. Yeah. yeah. So that things flip and flop, especially when you've got these strong players who are playing really hard, and a whole lot of those people think they're in a good position. So, although you know, with Victoria's shoot shoot your shot, don't shoot yourself in the foot speech. I'm with Jeremiah. I think she might have shot herself in the foot, at least grazed it with this because i don't see where the next step is gavin had a good 
extra video where he was talking about his rationale and you could see how this you know the resulting vote was coming together mm -hmm. how he was looking at it and him talking about what he was willing to do but there's no obvious next step for any of them so it's like hitting a reset switch and for rick you know the hope is that well i think he can probably count on david keeping the door open even though rick was wanting oh, yeah. to close it so i see that being a path for him really what you're watching for in an opportunity like what's happening going to happen now in this scramble that's going to be the result of this week week seven's vote is for someone to step out front and make themselves a viable target well, someone through what they say or what they do, some sequence of actions they set in motion is going to essentially volunteer to be the next one to go, I think. Well, the, uh, Rick could join back up with David and who knows, maybe Ron and uh, Julia. Julie? Julie. Yeah, Julie would be willing to flip over with them and they could use uh, the Lesu people to kind of give them the numbers and... They'd still have a majority over Lasso unless they yep. went back together. You, you don't you know six. what groupings are going to happen this right. week. You need six. And with this group of people, mm -hmm. someone, like I said, is probably more than likely unintentionally going to step out in front of the train. I think what happened is that basically opened the door for new alliances, new moves, new it's a reset. strategies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where there might have been other more comfortable paths. but Right. Yep. Definitely earning it this season. Next up, we got an email from Leanne in California. Hi, all. Wow. The editors did it to us again. It's just no fun when you have no chance of guessing <laughs> who's going to be voted out. My teenage daughter, Emma Kay from California, used to love the Survivor edit so much that she considered going into film editing in college. And this year in high school, she signed up for a video class. Excellent. But now the new Survivor editors have dismayed her <laughs> so much that she's going to major in neuroscience. So, thanks. Anyway, other than the lame edit, I enjoyed watching the younger players make a big move. I'm really loving watching Victoria, and I did not expect that at all going into this season. I can't decide whether they'll take out Ron next or go back to picking off returning players. With Kelly's idol, I'm worried for David, so I'm really interested to hear the discussion this week before I make a decision. Mm -hmm. Happy Survivor watching, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Leanne. Up next, we have a voice clip from David. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. It's David in Pittsburgh. Okay. I have a question. So are we no, are we no longer seeing even the logo in the intro? In fact, there is no intro. We don't see any cast anymore. And we don't see previously on Survivor. Really, it's as if my DVR has cut off the first 15 seconds. So does that little few seconds of showing the logo take away so much from Exile Island. I, I, I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. Okay, Eric and Ron. Ron talking about limited space and limited time and Eric talking about packages. Do they really think that that was the way to offer an olive branch to the rest of the players to join them? When they're seen strategizing out in the open and then War Dog can get in Julie's head and or Julia, I don't know which one is which, and Gavin, and, uh, and makes sense then obviously the others are too, are too cocky. I, I never thought anyone would be more obtuse than War Dog, but this is one instance of it. This tribal council was very intense for me. And once again, uh, Kelly and Lauren are, have nerves of steel. Oh, oh my gosh, the, their names are being thrown out again. And they coolly sit there and don't make a move. I, I'm really impressed with that. Now, with David talking about pilots and passengers and the blank sheet of paper, I think that's the difference between a seasoned player and a newbie. And so I think his advice, even though they had already made the decision, I think it, it was, was valid. And I really thought Ron the Puppet Master was the one to go. 
last night, but no, it was Eric. And one last thing, Stacy has a theory about women wearing high heels have an advantage in certain challenges. So this is what I propose. Next season, I think there should be, a, as an advantage, a tent, and it'll be filled with high heels, wedgies, Manolos, Louboutins, in every size for every cast member so that <laughs> all the teammates female and male can practice walking around in the heels in the sand before the final challenge. I think that's the only fair way to do this in the future. So will comma stay on track? Will they derail? We'll find out. See you guys after the next episode of survivor. All right. Thanks David. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California I'm quite enjoying this idea of not having the previously owned segment and going straight into the game. I'm not surprised to see Rick not wanting to go back to his former Lesu tribe because they indeed voted him out to begin with, and I can see that if he did go back with them once they got rid of Kama, he would probably be the next to go. So much for keeping Eric as my USB. However, they probably made the right choice in getting him out instead of Ron. I can see how Eric and Ron seem to have been running things on the Kama Alliance. I probably wouldn't have lasted very long in this immunity challenge. Standing on the beam with your feet is one thing, but having to be on your tiptoes the entire time, I know I would be one of the first few out. I thought it might have been Lauren who had the incident, and it was quite scary to watch it, but I'm very glad to see that she's okay and is able to continue playing. As for what's been happening on the edge, it was nice to see another advantage shown. I feel a little deja vu with the extra vote and who found it. Aubrey received the first one and now she can give it to someone still in the game. When they showed the practice aspect of the next challenge, I have no idea what this next challenge is going to entail. Do you guys have any thoughts on this? Well, that's generally part of an obstacle course. Mm -hmm. so, let me first say thanks, Jack. That was the end of Jack's email. Yeah. So thank you, Jack. But those, those are elements in an obstacle course where they're clipped into the rope, and they, that'll be part of it. There'll very likely be a puzzle at the end, too. Yeah. It, usually it's wrapped around this, and then you get past that hurdle, and then it's wrapped around something else, and you have to go over one and under another. Or... Right. They showed her practicing the first part, it said, of it. And so yeah. there was that vertical pole that she had to work her way around. Yeah. There'll be horizontals like Joanne's talking about. There could even be nets where they have to go up and around and they crawl through the nets. We've seen that before, too. Yeah. So there, there's all sorts of things they can do with that when mm -hmm. you're clipped onto a we rope. We just don't know have to where they're going with it. it and but... More than likely, it'll end up with a puzzle. So I would think even so. Things There'd out be and something. create some drama. Yeah. yeah, I would think so. And I don't know if practicing might help a little bit, but will it help enough to be determined? Give you, Given we've seen Joe's performance in those kind of things before, he, he very likely could blaze through it, though. There's still time, right? There's quite a bit of time that's going to elapse before that comes up if it's down at final five. So it could take its toll on everyone by the end. Of well, maybe the last person in has got the most advantage. Uh, exactly. The people who aren't has been... The people who have been deprived the longest seem to be having more struggles functioning because they don't have any opportunity to win a reward out on extinction island yeah, so they get yeah. nothing and what chris was saying is i would love to go fish i don't have the energy mm -hmm. i can't do it i don't have enough strength to go do it i when i first saw him in the extra video i thought wow he he looks like a different person you were seeing his eyes were glassed over glazed over it looked like it there so yeah it's yeah it's really taking a toll on him for sure all right, thanks, Jack. Next up, we got a call from Kim. Hi, all Survivor fans. This is Kim from North Carolina. Well, I lost my USB, but I'm okay with it. Eric aligned with Ron. I don't like Ron. Ron is schemy, which I don't really blame him for that. But power just doesn't look good on him. It makes me wonder, how does he treat people in his real life who mm -hmm. go against what he wants? The loyalty talk is a trick. It just leads to people playing with their emotions instead of strategy. For example, see Rick. He played with his emotions. Someone had to go that night on Lesu. Why does he have to be so bitter? And War Dog, on the other side, who's thinking about playing to win instead of playing to see his family. Speaking of War Dog, so far, I think he's the best player, even if he can't do challenges very well. He did a great job selling his plan to Victoria and Gavin. Rick 
could have been Sol, but he again was blinded by his emotions. And now he's on the bottom with Ron, for whom I think loyalty might be a one-way street, and Mm -hmm. Julie, who may be lonely on the moral high ground. It's amazing to me how proud the comma people are of themselves and their position of strength, when Joel is the sole reason that they're Mm -hmm. all in the game, Mm -hmm. and they voted him out first from their elevated moral high ground, by the way. They could at least acknowledge verbally that he's the reason they're there. And thinking back to that tribal council where they voted Joe out, if you see that the EE people are going to be on the jury, do you really want to put your biggest threat and your best provider out on that island with them where they're not voting each other off? All they have to do is compete at the very end to get back in. In the meantime, he's made life more pleasant for them. And and it could be not just Joe, but Chris and anybody else who gets voted out to EE. All the players need to think about the fact that going to EE may be a huge advantage. Lauren's hungry and she's still in the game. Why not be hungry and be on EE and making friends with a whole bunch of people from both of the tribes? All right. I think that's all I have. Everybody have a great weekend. Looking forward to your feedback. Yeah, good job, Kim. You can definitely hear all that in Joe's extra video, too. Oh, yeah. He's got that figured out in spades. So, yeah, he's thinking along the same lines as you at that point. He is for sure. working the jury. Yeah. Next up, we got an email from Shannon in Kansas City. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all Survivor fans, podcast listeners. What an episode. I thought this was a good episode for Victoria, Gavin, and Julia, but how great the play would have been to let Lauren and Kelly believe they were not safe so that the idols would be played, even if they were still going to vote out Eric. It's difficult to say if this was a good move or not until we see the repercussions. If Kama prevails or if Lesu is able to overtake Kama, we, we've we seen in other seasons how these players happen. These plays happen too early, and the smaller team is able to overcome the disadvantage of coming into the merge with smaller numbers mm-hmm. and make it to the end of the game, such as Samoa. I thought it was a good idea for David to hold on to the other half of the idol. I don't like it, but but good for David's game. I thought I would mention how impressed I've been with the women this season. They have not all found all the idols, but still, they have not only found all the idols, but still have them. Mm -hmm. Rick's was by production, even though he doesn't technically have one yet. I think there is a mole in the Kama tribe. My guess, Victoria, because Kelly and Lauren felt safe enough not to play their idols. I hope everyone has a good rest of the weekend and upcoming week. Thanks again, Joanne and Stacy, and all the SFP listeners. I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's thoughts. All right, thank you, Shannon. Up next, we have a voice clip from Justin. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, Justin from Michigan. Wanted to give some insight on the episode. I happened to be scrolling across Twitter right after the episode and saw that Victoria was sounding off that she originally wanted to get Kelly or Lauren and she was trying to sell that pitch to Gavin and Julia, but it came down to she somehow realized that Eric was actually promising different groups final three and she heard that through the grapevine that he had he went had went to three or four people offering them different final three scenarios with him and them in it and that's when she gave up on defending him and decided to go along with that she would rather be tight with gavin and julia who hadn't lied to her than eric who was kind of kind of sneaking around the already guaranteeing final three i think he was thinking way too far ahead in that scenario found that very interesting uh Victoria also said on Twitter that she was a little upset she at her lack of screen time, but acknowledged that it was nice to see Julia and Aurora, which I agree. Didn't realize Aurora was as athletic as she was. She was really zipping through the water and got up that ladder really, really fast. And Julia, I mean, every time she's had her confessionals, she seems to make good points. She seems to really understand the game and be able she's able to build relationships and, and maintain several relationships so aurora and julia i think they could go far in this game it is a shame that rick is again kind of just floating he he can't find a tight alliance anymore uh, especially now that he's kind of given up on david 
him and David aren't seeing eye to eye on things, and it's more of his resentment towards Lester as a whole, I think. It, it would be frustrating to be in Rick's situation. He could probably squeeze into that group of three with Gavin, Julia, and Victoria, but again, he'd be on the bottom. He could go to Ron and Julie, but again, he'd be on the bottom. So I think whatever group he ends up voting with, he's always going to be on the bottom. But he can last in the game a long time doing that. If he just keeps jumping, 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 uh, usually those people won't get targeted until maybe five or six. I guess that's my thoughts on the episode. I didn't expect this travel council, and I don't know what to expect next week, so I guess that's always good to uh, keep us in suspense. Thanks a lot for all you do, and I look forward to hearing everybody else. Ah, thanks, Justin. I hadn't seen that. So that extra insight into how Victoria ended up changing her mind. So I guess then, so what you, what we're left with is the I, the story we have is you know War Dog broached the subject. He was kind of like the catalyst and got Julia thinking. And Julia and Julia well, tested Eric and he failed. And he failed. And then uh, War Dog also got Gavin thinking, but. They couldn't sway Victoria, and then Victoria finds out he's made these final three deals, and now she's on board, and the script flips at that point, and they start bringing in other folks. Well, it was just so perfect that he convinced them that they were they were uh, holding on to David and Devon's to use to pick the rest of comma off when it came time. So I really, I really liked that. I like learning from Justin that Victoria oh, yeah. said yeah, that it yeah, had yeah. to do with him running around making final three deals. Yeah, that's why, that's she, why she surrendered to that. Yeah, went ahead and approach. sold him out. Good deal. Thanks again, Justin. Next up, we got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, early on I feared I'd need Dr. Joe to revive me from passing out during a continued pagonging. Fortunately, commas Kool-Aid finally wore off and individual games are emerging. I hope it lasts. Here are my other observations. Vada really freaked out over the extinct jury twist. Ron and Eric were criticized for telling allies to play for the family visit. At least they didn't tell them to play for the survivor auction. (laughs) Joey extinct definitely doesn't look very amazing. Will David suddenly stop stinking at puzzles if he makes it to final five? Doesn't, according to David, probably not. (laughs) He's acknowledged he's been doing poorly. Doesn't Ron understand that a puppet master is on the other end of the strings? The survivors are confused. Schmooz jump into cooking pots. Chickens don't. What's up with Kelly and flies? Do they think she's playing a crappy game? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Whoa, this is a stinker. Get it? Ron, sure mm-hmm. of Walter the puppet, too, because he looks kind of like De Niro mug, ah, doing yeah, a bad yeah. mug, right? The dictionary defines war dogging, verb, as to bark self-serving orders at people and expect unthinking compliance. Devins becomes a jerk when he's drunk on power. David and Rick should hire divorce lawyer Aurora to negotiate custody of the BFF idol. That's great. Black Friday on Extinction looks more genteel than Black Friday at my local mall. I don't think much of the practice advantage since you only practice one early segment. I'm sorry, but that's the blockhead challenge in my mind. The immunity challenge, we'll call it the blockhead. The blockhead challenge. Yeah, that's good. During the immunity challenge, the comma six made the classic front runners blunder of showing a supposed ally that they're that they really aren't. I don't think the pass out cam will catch on. Let's hope not. Aurora wanted to sign a good faith from her allies. She got one from Aubrey. Eric failed Julia's truth ring test. He might have fared better in a Turing test. I wonder if Eric will get a family visit on extinction. When did, <laughs> that's cruel. When did War Dog game, gain a firm grasp of strategy? Was he replaced by a pod person? Ron has a limited time offer for a select few, but I don't think anyone wants to buy a bridge from him. It's funny how quickly Eric's blindside wiped the smugness off Ron's and Rick's faces. Next time, David and Rick discuss visitation rights for the split idol. There's a mad scramble for allies, and something shocks Aubrey at Tribal Council. What can it be? Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks, Joanna and Stacy, for all you do. Can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Thank you, Josh. That was like excellent. That's some serious hamming for the camera that Aubrey's doing. Yeah, and she's been doing it all season. All, she's, it's too, practice. Too much. I would not be surprised to find out that she's practiced some of those faces in the mirror. In the mirror. <laughs> yeah. All right. I agree. Thanks again, Josh. Next up, we got a call from Jen. 
Hi everyone, this is Jen in California. I loved, loved this episode. It was one of my favorites in a long time. So I wrote a lot of notes on this and see if I can get through them. I actually wrote notes instead of off the top of my head here. Uh-huh. I don't like the move by Rick of just so overtly going with the comma group. I mean, if he decided that that was the best path for him, that's fine. But to just really burn the bridge, he was just so burn bridgey when he was talking to War Dog and talking to David. I mean, he's he's so out there saying, I'm with comma, that I really don't think that was good for his game. It's fine if you decide to do that, but you really need to keep that close to your vest and lie a little. It's Survivor. I am so proud of David for hanging on to his half of the idol after the conversation he had with Rick as well. David has been nothing but loyal to Rick, and I don't think, in my opinion, Rick has really had an opportunity to demonstrate his loyalty to David. He was voted out too soon. Then when he came back, he wanted to vote with Kama. David kind of trusted him and went along with that. Now David wants to swing back to the other voting block, if you will, and Rick didn't want to do it. He hasn't really shown himself to be trustworthy for David, and I'm glad that David is kind of sensing that and willing to go his own way. I do like the honesty and appreciate the honesty of their conversation, though. I'm going to be interested to see what their relationship looks like going forward and how civil that continues to be. I liked when War Dog was talking to Kelly and um, Lauren, maybe, when he was saying, oh, we have nothing to lose by going to rocks, risking going home. We're going home anyway. We may as well do that. That was really, that was a great point. And I loved the editing when War Dog was talking to Julia and Gavin. And it just kept switching back. It was War Dog's same, just one conversation, it seemed like. But it was switching back between Julia and Gavin and Julia and Gavin and Julia and Gavin. I just... I loved it. That gave them an Emmy for that editing. And a little side note about Extinction Island. Joe, is it me or did Joe get to shave? I was looking at his face when he was having his little crying moment. There's not one whisker anywhere. Not one stray whisker. I mean, I just... You know, it's supposed to, they're not supposed to get anything. I'm just wondering, did somebody let him shave? And finally, I loved how Jeff Probst busted Ron's chops when he was criticizing or saying that his uh, comma people should not go with the lesu people only to be on the bottom. And Jeff just said, okay, you're saying that, but you you certainly are open for business, aren't you? I loved it. And then seeing everyone's faces as the votes were being read. Eric's face, Ron's face, Julia's face and her eyes as she knew what was going to happen. The only thing that would have made it sweeter this week was if Ron was the one voted out. But I did get a vote off point for Eric. I called that one correctly. So much to say about this episode. So little time. I can't wait to hear others' comments. And I hope that this season gets better and better from this point on. But this was an awesome episode. Till next week. Bye. All right. I like your positivity. And got a point, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, you got a lot to be happy about, huh? Mm-hmm. Good deal. Thanks, Jen. Next up, we got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul in Louisiana here, and that was a great episode. Maybe because we saw so little of Extinction Island, but mostly for those huge personal dynamics that unfolded and refolded and surprised me. If I were Ron, I wouldn't brag about being a puppet master, though, because Eric got caught in his strings. To me, there's nothing better on Survivor than watching someone's cockiness get wiped off their face at a tribal council. And this week was very satisfying in this respect because Ron's face was even more fun to watch than Eric's. Well, at least for me. So then, I will say it. Dan Dog has his moments. His actions this week led me to believe that he's more a general than a soldier. That said, well, Lauren is the true war dog. The woman just won't quit. If she could only eat. I mean, her face shows the pain even when she's in the background of a shot and she's not the focus of attention. I'd have her picked as my USB, but her inability to eat scares me. Oh man, if she hangs in there and wins this thing though, wow. So, does anyone else feel that the shared idol is hugely symbolic of Rick and David's partnership in this game? Never to be together again, in other words. I won't be surprised when David throws his half into the ocean or the fire at Tribal Council. Rick's bitterness is fun to watch. I absolutely loved how his sarcasm went over Dan Dog's head. But he's not only burning bridges, he's nuking them from orbit. Sadly, he now knows just how many people on Kama trust him. He's on the bottom of the underdogs, and sarcasm isn't going to help. He can learn a lot from David, who's keeping his options open. Now, my regrets in this episode are, one, that Aubrey should have let Reem practice. Reem isn't a threat at all, and sharing trust like that could lead to a vote for Aubrey if she makes it to the end. 
And two, at the challenge, why didn't Victoria say, okay, you can have it before she fell? It couldn't hurt. Also, Mm -hmm. I sort of felt that Aurora was trying to end the challenge quickly by getting Victoria to surrender the idol to her. But then, as things progressed, well, I realized that just wasn't the case. And Julie, well, she's another regret this episode, because she's too busy making moral judgments, which will be her downfall, for sure. Still, someone needs to tell her that unless Jeff says the game has been paused, well, then it's on. And why, oh, why did I keep thinking that Julie's clothing, you know, those blue shorts and the red top, that they make her look like a skinny Wonder Woman? Yeah, I kept seeing that. So I'm hoping that Ron goes next, so that's who I'm picking. From the little I know of him, I'm thinking that he won't stay quiet, and then he'll just start rubbing everyone the wrong way until he ends up extinct. And finally, I will say that I kept Victoria as my USB. It was a tough decision, but in the end, I walked away from Steve's awesome website and never even opened the Select the USB page. And I feel better about it this week because Victoria seems self-aware and not unwilling to refocus her gameplay. So I guess that's it for me. Take care of... Oh, that Reem, though. She does have to have the last word, doesn't she? Okay, that's really it for me. (laughs) Bye. All right. Thanks, Paul. (laughs) I think Victoria's still got potential. It's just up in the air, and she's always mm-hmm. been flexible. She's ready to pivot, so that's good. And she seems to be keeping doors open. I I thought she was as good a choice as any, but mm-hmm. you know, having her as a USB twenty four still hard for me to well, pass that kind of thing up. Yep. Even though now I have USB zero, he could make it back. Well, it's possible, but as of right now. <laughs> Not there. I, I, some people were thinking it may not be good to send the strong players there, but I say send everyone that you're worried about there, <laughs> as many as you can, that represent a challenge to your game because only one's weaken, coming back. And you weaken them. Yeah. Well, at, at a minimum, it can weaken them. We'll see. Aubrey seems to be powering up. So She is. Yeah. We'll see if that's sustainable for her, given the long term. But... Well, she's I, I, been there longer than Joe. Yes. So, yeah. and she's just revving up, yeah. at least in her her videos. Right. And she says this is where her game really kicks into high gear, too. So, This this is where she's m- most comfortable. Right. But I, I would be all in favor of sending people through a door that only one can come back through. Now, you got to manage your jury, of course, and mm-hmm. hopefully you have a story and... You just hope that that one person who comes back through, who, <laughs> who's built all of those connections there in that jury over that time, you know, hopefully you can get rid of them again. That becomes your one, your one big challenge because this well, is really a shortcut for Joe to come back in or I was whoever wins. Really looking forward to watch the competition, you know, and especially with those three powerhouse guys on there, but. After watching Chris just be so weak and and just not not tracking well, mm-hmm. I, I you're wondering what you'll get yeah. in terms of performance. Yeah, right? yeah. Depends on how many more days it is until they they go there. I will not be surprised if there start to be advantages that are food based out there. Something that's going to help them in some way, and they can choose to share or not. Well, you would hope they would get something or at least you know an easier ability to to fish because if they get so weak they can't even do that that's that's not going to help anything yeah well it's not supposed to be easy either so no and, and we don't need to make it these easy people, but these people made their choices they decided to do how want they, them to what survive. they out there with in terms of their body conditioning yeah so. But nobody knows what it will do to your body until it happens. Because people there, don't starve themselves like that. When, when, hmm, well, there's a lot more going into fasting these days and understanding what the, one what the thing. benefits can be. Fasting for weeks at the time, which is basically what they're doing, mm-hmm. is way different. We and we've seen it before. I mean, we've talked to these folks before when they've gone. Like, you know, over two weeks without anything to eat. Mm-hmm. So Lauren's not going to be the first one in that regard, for sure. All right. Well, I enjoyed all the feedback this week. We want to thank everyone who took the time to send in your thoughts and your predictions and, like, that extra info. That was great to learn that about Victoria from her Twitter feed. And 
just want to say good job to everyone. You guys are really killing it this season on the listener feedback shows. We've been having a great time. I want to say a big thanks to Christy and Scott for your donations. We appreciate your support. That, that helps keep the operation running. Thank you so much. If you play in just JSFL, don't forget to get your picks in before the deadline on Wednesdays, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific Time. This was going to be a wild one for sure. This just gives me so much to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm already, I found myself being pulled to the roster going, hmm. (laughs) Right. Already. Yep. And remember, there's always a link in the show notes to those extra videos. And uh, I'll make sure to include one to that picture of Walter. So you can see that comparison to Ron. That's (laughs) awesome. That is so awesome. Make an effort to go look at that. That's yeah. just that's or just so Google cool. it. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Dunham. Walter. Well, but to the picture of Ron, it's all about the picture of Ron. You was want them so side perfect. by side? Like yeah, that? side okay. by side. All right, we'll put that in the show notes too. That that's what did it for me. It was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Because <laughs> they're making you, the same face. You look at one, you look at the other. Yeah. And it's like Walters I, doesn't change. Ron just happened to make exactly that. Same I know face. it. It was just really amazing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I thought so. Good deal. All right, we're stoked, excited for Wednesday, and what comes next. Have a good one.